the, the decay of protein in the colon leaching into the small intestine. Like I literally had that. That literally happened to me and I didn't know it was happening until later because the protein wasn't digesting because I was chronically sympathetic all the time because I wasn't sleeping. And because I wasn't sleeping, I was stressed and, I, and all this, like everything. It was just this like this wheel. And dude, it took me two years to like reset my gut, my gut. I had to like go on antibiotics for the first time ever. I had to do all this protocol, which helped. But you know what? Help, you know, and you know what? After that, even it was like the gut was still off and I didn't understand why. And it wasn't until I was like, I'm then the protocol came out. I was like, I'm doing this fucking protocol. And it was hard because you're like, your idea of like how you have to eat is just so set in your, in like the way that you believe is the way it is because it had worked at one point, but there's a saying, right? Like it works until it doesn't. Um, all right, dude. Uh, I really wanted to, cause we kind of came from, come from the same, I don't know, partly same teachings, but we do this thing, whatever you want to call it. No, I don't, it's not even a diet. It's just what we know it is the nutrition protocol. So we're going to talk about, I want to, we're going to talk about food, man. And I know, I know you are super passionate about this topic specifically. Yeah. <laughs> all your memes, dude. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the conversations and we've had, also, which are It's also awesome. changing all the time. <laughs> It like, is changing all the time. I, and I don't mean just the mainstream, but I mean also my views, you know, like new information, new experience, oh, interesting. everything. Like it's, uh, I tried a lot of stuff and uh, I'm still experimenting with a lot of stuff. And it's just like, there is no right and wrong, you know, absolutely not. No, 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 it's, 100%. Uh, yeah. The, the one thing okay, is wrong so... and it's ca- counting calories. But <laughs> yeah. That... <laughs> <laughs> no, which just let's, half we'll get in, let's we'll get we'll get into that okay we'll, i mean you're not really wrong but um <laughs> i agree i 100 percent agree um so what okay so for anyone new like what explain what the nutrition protocol is like what what's the foundation of it and then maybe uh i got some questions for you to like feed off of that but let's start there yeah so uh and maybe Maybe I will say it in a different way than you heard it before, or the diff- in a little bit different way than uh, than we usually talk about it. But for me, sure. ultimately, the nutrition protocol is a self-regulation through food and its impact on nervous system. So that that is what what it's for me. And to put it into more simple mm-hmm. terms. Whatever you eat is impacting you not only in digestion, but also on your nervous system, theoretically and practically also in your mood, in your attitude, and so on, so on. It's all happening through the gut flora and the bacteria, all the bacteria we have in our gut. And uh, this is not some voodoo shit. It's actually like scientifically proven. Yeah. Yeah. It's just that it's really hard to prove it's really hard to prove what does what. What it's proven so far is that we know that something is happening there when you eat certain types of food and something else is happening there when you eat different types of food. But to say like, you know, if you eat these nuts, you will be happy. And if you eat uh, this banana, you will feel certain way. That's not how it works. But it definitely has a overall impact on the body so the whole protocol is about regulating ourselves through the food and nutrition yeah that's pretty much what i say too like it's it's yeah you're trying to feel yourself and the signals that your body's telling you through food yeah which is which is that's a good point that you read but, it. You read the signals. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Not some uh, measurement like, device. Yeah, you read no, it. No, no. So, which is like you, you, you talk to people about that and you, I'm sure you know. It's like, what does, what do you even, what does that even mean? Like food is for like craving, like satisfying something or looking good or 
building muscle, which is like all these things that it seems that everyone thinks they understand. And and they don't. On one like, side, this is true. Yes, but, for but sure, one hundred percent. But that is just scratching the surface, and it goes but way deeper. Yeah. The thing is, they just think that that's true. Yeah. Which is the problem? But it's like no, there's much more below that that you we have we all have to understand. Yeah. So so. Uh, Good, good that you Go said ahead. the cravings because that's something we definitely need to. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about that. Okay, let's talk about that. So uh, cravings, in a, I'll just tell you a quick story. Yeah. So when Julian started to talk about cravings in StrongFit, mm-hmm. and we were all on mentoring, like kind of you know we we're just like listening, like, what this that whatever. Yeah. You know, and he was connecting it all into the nervous system, and then we start to kind of explore. And for me, I don't have comfort food me personally i don't have food that i feel good when i eat it or i want to have for a certain occasion or anything it's just that, that's not the way i was brought up and i have a twin brother and for us the food was always kind of fuel and it was especially when we were like little little kids it was like get it as fast as you can or the other one will take it you know, so it was a competition. <laughs> it's always with brothers and sisters, yeah, yeah, yeah. dude. It's so weird, yeah. man. I'm an only child, so I don't know what that's like. Okay. But bro, I've heard this story so many fucking yeah. times. It's hilarious. <laughs> so, so basically, yeah. th- that's why also like my eating is, v- I eat very fast. Yeah, mm. I eat very fast and I don't chew much. I, I chew as much as I need to swallow, <laughs> but that's pretty much it. Yeah. <laughs> Just to get by, dude. Yeah, exactly. Just so it gets through. Uh Anyway, uh, for me, all this concept of comfort food and like, oh, people have cravings and all that, it was pretty new. And I I was in a gym. I exactly remember the people I was talking to. And I just uh, told this couple of guys before class, before session, like, you know, what? I, like on the mentoring, we were talking about this shit, like people have food for a different moods like when they are sad they have chocolate mm. and when they are when they are angry they have ice cream uh, and i was basically kind of like mocking it like like what a crazy <laughs> idea and these people are looking <laughs> yeah, at me yeah. and they're like yeah exactly and they started to name what they eat when they feel certain way you know and i was like holy oh. shit because first interesting first of all what was very crazy to me was how aware they are of the fact that they are actually doing it and how okay of that they fact, were with that. Of all things. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. like so you aware <laughs> yeah. that you eat certain food to get you out of feeling certain way. Which, mm. when you say it like this, like, well, when I'm sad, I have ice cream and I feel better. It's like, okay, well, then I have ice cream to feel better. And it seems like a very okay-ish idea, right? Like, solution for everything. The right. D- the, the deeper problem... It's not the comes, worst thing you could do. Yeah, yeah well... But... Yeah, exactly. But, but the thing is that when whenever there is a problem, and now this is the... This is the... Psychology combined with, mm. s- like... Uh, almost physics and a spiritual journey and uh, like it's it's a combo of uh, different fields so just bear with me here yeah no no anytime anytime there is a problem basically problem is when something is not going our way yeah which means that Mm -hmm. we had a certain expectation and how the stuff is evolving or happening is different so we have something we expect and we have something we observe or the reality of it yeah Mm -hmm. and the bigger the gap between this is which they call it somatic error because there is an error in uh uh in this uh basically the 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 gap is the error yeah this is yeah so the bigger the prediction and the observation yes the gap so the bigger the gap is the bigger problem we have because yeah evolutionary speaking if you go to this wild cat mm-hmm. yeah chi 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 nice nice chi chi yeah <laughs> and then your arm is missing because that fucking thing bit it off that was yeah. a pretty big Mistake. misjudgment yeah which means that if you misjudge something 
it is potentially dangerous. And it applies on everything, especially when we go to this like a primal, primal situations. Like if these berries are poisonous, you need to avoid them. If this yeah. cliff is too steep, you need to avoid it. So any bad judgment can be not only dangerous, but it can be detrimental to your life. Can result in death and therefore exactly. result in the stop of evolution, Ex- which exactly. is the strongest driver. So I know, what, I always say it's like, it's better to predict to predict than to react. Yeah, yeah, of course. And that's yeah. what the system is based off of. And it makes sense. It's logically pretty sound. Yeah, so, so body is way. trying to be predicting everything and that's not happening necessarily on a conscious level, but it's mm-hmm. happening on subconscious like when you when you're sitting right now yeah. in a car or in a sofa or at your desk yeah are you aware of the temperature in a room are you aware if there is any smoke or a weird smell in a room are you aware how hard or soft is the stuff you're sitting in like mm-hmm. you are only aware of these things you perceive them all subconsciously and you are only aware yeah. of them if they become out of normal out of mm. something what is considered out of range yeah. yeah and that's when it's pushed into your consciousness like oh shit this smoke is not correct here like th- th- mm. there is something burning or oh shit yeah. it's cold this needs to be fixed yeah. or addressed like go pay attention to it please exactly it's it's basically yeah. a warning like okay now this is out of ordinary pay attention to it anyway anytime there is a problem we have three kind of three steps how we are going to approach it, yeah? Mm -hmm. First of all, we can change us, how we're looking at it, or change the thing, how it is, yeah? It really depends on the situation which one will come first because sometimes changing our view is faster and better solution than changing the reality of a thing, yeah? If the reality of a thing is too, too much. Yeah. Or... We change the reality of it, which automatically changes how we're looking at it. Yeah. yeah. So the how first two steps. It. Yeah. So the first yeah. step, the feel will come last. So the oh, first. Okay, okay. Yeah. So the first step is how am I looking at it? Second step is how the what the reality actually is. So it's either changing me or changing the world, changing the environment, mm-hmm. and that resolves when I go through these two steps not necessarily in a particular order, Yeah, that will make me feel differently about the situation. Yeah, So, therefore, if you give me some stressor situation where the somatic error can come in, just some example you can think of. Jonathan? Yeah. Yeah, like, do you have any example of, like, a stressful situation? Oh, sorry, can, here, like, the mic, <laughs> yeah, the mic was, just cut out there. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, okay, so there yeah. was a question yeah. question to you, yeah? Like, uh, <laughs> give, <laughs> give, give me some, like, an example where we can where we can uh, explain this on. Um, like, how to resolve a somatic error? Yeah, yeah. Um, like, a, a situation of a sim- sim- somatic error. Yeah, I would say, the, man, the easiest one is, like, uh, um... Like having a fight with your spouse or someone. Oh, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. you're having a fight. So now your solution is that you can change how you look at it, which is not really happening yeah. often, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. no. You not can, when there's two parties involved. Yeah. Or you can change the environment, which means in this case, how they are looking at it. Yeah. Yeah. Or you can even change... The environment in the meaning of you getting out of that relationship. Yeah, if we're talking about some mm-hmm. long term solution, that's also an option. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, you can change that view that you have, or you can change their view, come to a certain solution. And if the solution is good enough, and now we are not talking about like uh, you acted out and uh, then you faked that you are okay with it and you mm-hmm. still feel bad about it. No, like... It truly it, got resolved. Yeah, like, it truly got resolved. It will change how you feel about it. You have this, like, peace, like, okay, uh, it was stressful, but now it's resolved, yeah? So yeah. the ultimate third step is that this whole process changes how you feel about it. The problem is that we have a couple of behaviors and also substances around us 
that we can skip the first two steps. Mm-hmm. We can skip yes. what we do and we can skip anything that the environment is doing and we can stop perceiving it by going for a comfort food or drugs or alcohol or caffeine or whatever. It can be scrolling. It can be compulsive shopping. Yeah. yeah. Like any time, Beha- any behavior, any behavior, anything yeah. that over time will become a pattern of if this happens, I do this. If this yeah. happens, I do that. So that's Change why how you feel. ice cream is not the best solution for sadness because you are not solving the root cause. You're only mm. changing how you feel about it. And that sadness is not going away. You only put no. a patch on it that will eventually fade away. And especially given how our dopamine system works, the reward system and motivation system of the body, because dopamine is more about motivation, yeah? You do something yeah. right, you feel good about it. So it motivates, motivates you to do that to behavior do more. more. And that's yeah. the problem. If you have a problem, you can't resolve it, you don't resolve it, but you have a or chocolate or whatever it is, you get dopamine from that. And next time you need more. And then you need it's more. So, it's so funny. So <clears throat> when I did the nutrition protocol, mind you, I've kind of like you, I've been doing it for oh, like two years now and like slowly getting better in the ways that like work for me, what I find. And like what I really noticed for myself Once I like, because it's, let's just, we'll, and we'll get into maybe like the macros. Uh, the uh, macro yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I think we should establish first, just so, just so it's clear that the whole nutrition protocol is designed to avoid this behavior of fixing shit through the food. This is exactly what I wanted to say. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> okay. so no, no. So what I noticed like instantly was like, my I because I don't dude I don't drink much like I don't like I'm not I'm just not that guy I don't party I don't smoke like weed I don't I'm not I don't really do any of that stuff so naturally when things would happen like sugar was just it was the most readily available thing to hide behind mm. and so once I started doing the protocol I started noticing it more get stressed have sugar get stressed, have sugar. And then it wasn't until I was like, okay, I'm going to do no fix November and I'm going to stay away from sugar. And then what happened was like, I would get stressed. I realized I was like, holy Jesus, like I'm using sugar to basically change how I feel about whatever, something at work or fight with the girlfriend or some whatever it was. Yeah. Like sugar was that thing that I would use. And I was just like, oh, like, it's okay. Like I just... I'm just having fucking, so I can, <laughs> I, we both know it's like, oh, you deserve it. It's like, you don't deserve fucking anything like that. But that's like <laughs> the, that's the way that your, your brain will like, will be like, okay. And that part of the dopamine is like, no, no, you're okay. Like you can do this. It's fine. Like you're allowed to. And it's like, no, like the fact that you think you're allowed to is the, is part of the problem. And I just realized I was like, holy Jesus, like I use sugar so much more. Ever since then, dude, it's like sugar's gone. But I also noticed that like things are a little, not harder, but like your energy only goes, it's definitely more efficient, but it, it takes more energy to solve those problems naturally because you're not just running away from them or shoving them down or whatever with food, right? Yeah, but you also are actually solving them. Yes, but it, that's the point is yes, <laughs> You like, you know, so you're like you, moving to the next level. You're just not avoiding the level you are at, but you're actually moving to the next level. Exactly. Which is like, dude, how, how many people do this? Like even within the sphere of like, of like the people that I know of through fitness, like, I even, think everybody's like every, doing it. Yeah. Everything is like, here's a healthy shit food, which is, that makes no fucking sense at all. Like you can't make healthy ice cream. Like, it's not fucking food, first of all. Like, we got to understand that. Unless you're going to, you know what I mean? Like, there's just no way. 
Unless you're going to make the cream yourself somehow. Like, like you put apple into the freezer, yeah? Yeah. But, like, other than... <laughs> yeah, or a peach. But, like, other than that, stop like stop lying, right? And stop, yeah, stop but, bullshitting, but kind this of. Is, this is always the case. Like, people people deny, uh, deny that they are there, obviously, because they don't have yeah. that problem. They don't have the comfort food. Or even they do, it's not that big of a deal. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know... I believe, and I believe that everybody does this. Everybody has their either escape behavior or Mm -hmm. some of these fixes. Everybody has it. The thing is, how much are we aware of them? How much do we want to change it? And to what degree is it actually influencing our life? Because there are extremes where people are literally stuck in their lives for decades because mm. they are not acting on anything that is really bothering them. They are only every night making themselves feel better by getting a little bit drunk, by smoking cigarettes or yeah. having some cakes and or, or even, you know, drugs and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. th- th- there's the thing that, or or doing the uh, some other behavior, you know? And yeah. funny enough, what I noticed is that Many times, people who have certain goals and kind of reach them, but those goals were very much set as a certain point in the future or certain number, you know, the, the goal is mm-hmm. not the process itself. The if, your yeah. goal, if your goal is fitness... That is not that my goal is to be 85 kilos or my goal is to be right. 55 kilos. That, that's not fitness goal. That's number goal. No. Fitness yeah. mm. is a state you are at for life. And mm. because yeah. life is moving forward, your fitness needs to move forward. You can't just like, okay, so I, I got fit enough. <laughs> like, what the fuck? That doesn't exist, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, we're here. Yeah, if you are, <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you are taking fitness as your goal then it's endless it always goes and it's a process which is yeah it it might be kind of scary or demotivating that it never ends but well that's the reality it never ends yeah you talked about this last podcast infinite games yep (laughs) exactly it's an infinite game infinite game you never stop playing it you You can't the only time the only time you lose an infinite game is if you stop playing you just need to keep playing. Yeah. And yeah. the other example, the opposite example is somebody who sets a goal and it can be a student, like, you know, student finishing their uh, graduation and like, and now what? Because mm-hmm. they had a purpose. They were going after certain purpose and now it's taken away. So now, mm-hmm. well, you need to find a purpose. And many people slide into these fixes when they lose a purpose or they set up incorrect purpose. So mm, the ultimate problem, the ultimate problem in this is not necessarily that there are problems because people with a solid purpose will see every problem as a next step, next challenge. When you get that done, when you get over that, you go to the next level and you are aware of it and you, Work on it this way. If somebody mm. has a problem who has no purpose, like like they, they don't know where to move, therefore, the, the answer is to feel good about it. At least to feel good about it, or at least to... We literally have this uh, expression in uh, Slovakia, I don't know if it's used in English as well, like drown your problems, yeah? yeah. In alcohol, yeah, got, for yeah. example, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, and you can see that we, we talked uh, before we started recording, we talked a little bit about uh, people who have everything, who got everything yeah. handed <laughs> yeah. also because of the uh, successful parents or whatever. Like, yeah. these people are usually very, very fucked. Yeah. yeah? And yeah. generations, generations of the hardworking working. Uh, you know, f- grandfather and father will only get to a point of entitled brats 
they don't they don't really have a purpose unless the parents or the gu- guardians who wh- whatever we call them are smart enough to make their life appropriately hard as well and right. do- don't hand them everything easily yeah yes this is true too much leisure too, yeah, too yeah. it's too easy well, you, it's, easy it's, mode it's, is not good mode it's the it's the old expression like uh, uh, how many times we talked about it like easy times Easy yeah. times create soft men, soft men create hard times, hard times create uh, uh, tough tough men, tough men create easy yeah. times, and you go uh, again and again. So, yeah, like, you look at all self-made millionaires and billionaires, and uh, or, or just successful people. It doesn't need to be about money, yeah? yeah. It doesn't need to be about how much uh, is uh, whoever earning. For some people, that might not be, uh, you know appealing at all you know Mm -hmm. some people rather prefer to spend time differently or whatever and or contribute like i have a friend who is a doctor and he uh, for for the amount he is earning i don't really know uh, much people who don't give a shit about money and not because he is earning a lot of money but he is Mm -hmm. earning a lot of money because of the way of how he does his work and how great he is. And he does it mm. with a purpose of actually helping people. And because he wants to help them better, he needs to get better. And that's his loop he's in. Right. But it's not it's a just, loop. Yeah. It's a spiral. Yeah. It's always evolving. Yeah. Yeah, he's not yeah. uh, running in the yeah. circles. Yeah. Right. Right. So what, so when you take, okay, how about this? Take me back. To when you first did the protocol, what okay. you noticed and like what it, what it was. So how did you do it? Like, but cause it's around food. What foods did you kind of eat? And then let's evolve that into like what it is today. Okay. Well, when, when I started, uh, it was not really hard for me because as I yeah, told you, I don't, yeah. I don't really have Obviously. any emotional <laughs> bond to any food. Uh, even when we did the first first edition of No Fix November, which means basically you eliminate absolutely everything that you use for kind of stimulation, or if you have a behaviors, that means as well. Yeah, like I said as an example, compulsive mm-hmm. shopping because there was one guy who was yeah. doing that. Like uh, he was trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he really. Was, yeah, on Amazon, oh. he was fucking crazy. Oh, that's like, so fucking wild. Yeah, he he was so addicted he was traveling a lot and he told us yeah. that when he comes home he lives in us and he told us when he came home he has tens if not hundreds of packages waiting for him because he <laughs> always fuck? is ordering some but it's not mm. like a lot like a new tv or it's small no. little shit like you 100 yeah. percent don't need you know and yeah, yeah, yeah. the thing is that he had a room full of these unopened boxes. He just liked the fucking yeah, he just, feeling of he, getting the package. Yeah, he was like, That's oh, what? Fucking cr- he was somewhere wow. outside and he would see something on a person like a, I don't know, I'm making shit like a pocket knife or a, a ring yeah, or yeah. some, you know, some trinket. Like an artifact from a movie or, you know, just like a souvenir yeah. or whatever. He's like, oh shit, I can get that, you know, and Two dollars there, three dollars <laughs> there, and just dang, 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 you know, and yeah. So if you recognize that you have this kind of problem, well, that you eliminate that as well. So we did that on No Fix November. Wow. And yeah. for me, and now I am not saying this like how cool and great I am, because I am aware that I have very short uh, fuse and temper mm-hmm. with people yeah. who have food cravings because I have a hard time understanding it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but there are other stuff that, uh, like, for example, now Timea, because she's listening now, <laughs> she's, uh, <laughs> she's uh, pointing that I'm spending uh, too much time on my phone. So maybe that's, uh, maybe that's mine and something to look at. Anyway, mm. that time, the only thing I eliminated, I'm not saying that was the only thing that I needed to eliminate, but yeah. given the food and all that, the only thing I eliminated was coffee. Like, I, right. I stopped coffee. I, I didn't even have a decaf. Like, for that month, I was just like, okay, no coffee. Mm. But before, just 
Yeah, like I was uh, very, let's say I was working long hours and I was fairly busy that time. I would easily have five, six, sometimes eight double espressos a day. Oh, bro, that's... Uh, yeah, so cool. I was so chronically tired. <laughs> I was so chronically tired. I could no have shit. a double espresso and go to bed straight away. No problem. <laughs> wow, dude, that would... That would wreck me, bro. Yeah. So now, as now me as well, but because of I was really, well, I just built a tolerance, yeah, and course, yeah, I was so yeah. chronically fatigued that my body yeah. didn't feel it. However, yeah, what happened? Yeah. I I had the aura ring or whoop or maybe yeah, even both yeah. because I might be I I might have both because there was time where I was like testing them both and comparing. Yeah. And I stopped. After three, four days of mild headaches, yeah, because there's a normal caffeine withdrawal syndrome, yeah. uh, my deep sleep doubled. Holy shit. And, yeah, and you noticed that right away. Yeah, and I noticed yeah. it right away because I was, I was <clears throat> able to fall asleep, but it was more like a coma <laughs> more than sleep. Yeah. Like, like my <laughs> brain didn't rest it. Body was yeah, resting, yeah. but not brain. So I never really got a proper deep sleep. And yeah, that, that was the problem. This. So so yeah. when I started the protocol, it was very simple. And basically, I, I think we can sum it into very, very easy, uh, you know, like rules. And that was, yeah. you never mix protein and f uh, carbs together. Yeah. Because they are sending opposite signals. Yeah, protein is, is sending yeah. signal to rest and carbs are sending signal to do stuff because they are the fastest energy. But Paolo, that's not going to work. Yeah. Because I'm a bodybuilder and <laughs> I need to grow. So I need to eat carbs in order to grow. Well, you can. Protein. You can. But you need to eat the carbs to fuel the training and you need to yeah. eat the protein to fuel the recovery. So you no, can but I need them both it. at the end because carbs fuel recovery. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know that carbs and protein, and now this is not even going to this is not even going to the super deep nervous system thing, but just yeah. we will just get stuck into the actual stomach, yeah, where the digestion yeah. is happening. Yeah, you know that uh, protein requires way way lower pH, yeah. so way higher acidity in the stomach to actually be bro broken down than carbs. Yeah. So if you got both of them there, it's like kind of <laughs> yeah. a mix where nothing yeah. is processed very well because yeah. it's just a mess. Yeah? yeah. And the other true is that in nature, you have foods, you have foods that are fed with protein. Yeah. There is... Nowhere in the nature a food that contains carbs and protein or carbs and fat at the same time. Maybe avocado yeah. would be like a... But the carbs in avocado are not that high that it can be considered a carb source. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Totally. It's like the same thing. And now all the vegans, please listen carefully. Beans, legumes, yeah. all that stuff is not a protein source. Yes, it source. has some protein, <laughs> yeah. But it's like y you can't say it's a it's a protein source. It has some protein, but it has triple the amount of carbs. So that's not yeah. how you judge the source of the food just because it has some of it. It's, it's, yeah. it's like it's like saying that On the chicken one... chicken breast is yeah. a so yeah. <laughs> sodium uh, uh, sodium, you know, source. Like yeah. it has yeah. some of it, but that's not yeah. why you eat it. Like yeah. a, like a, just because it's got pro, like that's one category that you're measuring. So you can't just say, take that one category of protein and be like, oh, bean equals chicken breast. No. <laughs> yeah. You know like how much bean. Not even the same thing. Yeah. You know how much bean equals chicken breast if you just go for the protein huh. and not yeah. even talking about quality and spectrum of amino mm -hmm. acids in it. Yeah. That's yeah. completely different. But yeah. Anyway. Anyway, this is uh, just a kick into the vegans because it's like, that's yeah. one of the things. And you know what? I know couple, couple of people who 
I don't want to say I am responsible for it, but I can mm. proudly say that I was part of their <laughs> awakening from conversion. Fr- yeah conversion yeah. back to yeah. back to normal uh, humans, not yeah. only eating vegan food, and uh, they have amazing health results thanks to that yeah. as well. Well, I've heard it's like after four years, like seventy five percent of vegans or vegetarians are just they're off the diet. Yeah, like, no these shit. guys were seven years, no like, religious. Oh, that's crazy, dude. And uh, then the question that came to me was, what can I do to recover better, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And I said, I said, <laughs> well, egg, eggs, and now we're going for steaks together, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, that's so good. Mission okay, so no, no carbs and protein together? Yes. What else? Uh, well, well, that's pretty much it. You eat carbs to fuel the workout... Mm-hmm. You eat proteins to recover, which means you do it only when you know you're not going to do much afterwards. Because I, o- I always said this example to people. When was the last time you had a steak or like uh, six, five, six scrambled eggs and you were like, oh, let's go work out now. Like that's not how yeah. it works. It's never literally is shutting down your sympathicus. So the parasympathicus nervous system can kick in and your rest and digestive system are domina- dominating the processes in the body. And that's the whole idea of it, that if you have carbs, it will kick you more towards the sympathetic, which means activity, let's do shit, let's break shit, let's train, let's hike, mm-hmm. whatever it is. When you have protein, that's more for recovery. And basically, super simple as that, protein yeah. for recovery, carbs for fuel fats to fill in don't mix them up done this is whole protocol it's very simple and it's funny yeah. because when i i remember so i'll just kind of add on to that is Go like for it. i i like i was work man i was working like two jobs at one point trying to start like my business and like working an electrical job and like just stressed out like all the time. And this was kind of before StrongFit had done anything with nutrition, kind of before, like just before, like even the behavior stuff started coming out. So anxiety and depression. And, um, I, and, and now knowing what I know now and looking back at what happened to me is like, literally I, do you know a vertical diet, Stan efforting? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know specifics, but I have some idea. It's basically like no vegetables, um, it's right, like white rice and steak, mm-hmm. bioavailable, like foods. So it's like, you're supposed like, it was basically eating that all like three meals a day. Okay. So I did this. I remember I came back, I had like a vacation, came back from vacation, had like a night shift that morning, was just stressed, literally ate the, ate like a steak. And this, mind you, this has been like months of doing this. I just remember it sitting in my stomach and then I went to work at like whatever, 10 o'clock at night. And then literally for like four days, I could feel that steak. What happened as we go along this little story is like the stress was so high all the time. I was sympathetic all the time and I was eating carbs and protein together all the time because that's what you do. Macros, all the stuff. I end like... I ended up not like being able to go to the washroom for like three months. What? So I couldn't, so like I just had a lot of emotional stress. Like, yeah. So like emotional, like stuff like that, that's a thing. Um, uh, physical stress, like everything, like every stress. You did a shit for three months. Yeah. Like, like little pebbles, (sighs) maybe like every fourth day. And it was like getting really bad. And so, no shit. Literally. I literally <laughs> developed a bacterial infection. So when Julian talked about the over like Prevotella, that bad bacteria, yep. like the, the decay of protein in the colon leaching into the small intestine. Like I literally had that, that literally happened to me and I didn't know it was happening until later because the protein wasn't digesting because I was chronically sympathetic all the time because I wasn't sleeping. And because I wasn't sleeping, I was stressed and and all this, like everything. It was just this like this wheel. And dude, it took me two years to like 
reset my gut, my gut. I had to like go on antibiotics for the first time ever. I had to do all this protocol, which helped, but you know what? And you know what? After that, even it was like the gut was still off and I didn't understand why. And it wasn't until I was like, I'm then the protocol came out. I was like, I'm doing this fucking protocol. And it was hard because you're like, your idea of like how you have to eat is just so set in your, in like the way that you believe is the way it is because it had worked at one point, but there's a saying, right? Like it works until it doesn't kind of thing. (laughs) And so I slowly just started weeding the protein out during the day, like just there. I was like, okay. And then the stomach kind of started to get better. And I was like, okay, fuck, this is getting better. Introduce more fat into the diet. So like heavy cream, avocado, like, you know, egg yolks. And then I would just do that with carbs. Like if I, if I was going to like whatever avocado on toast, like not like I was having any crazy carbs and I'd still have like the odd rice at night, like little bit, little bit. And then eventually I was just like, it took me a while to wean off like the idea of what you think you need. And by the time you knew it, I was like eating less than a hundred grams of carbs. And, um, like I was only eating mostly my protein. I was eating all my protein at night because I didn't really have any time to, I was never really chilling during the day. Yeah. And it was, and if I was doing anything, I was, if I was sitting doing computer work, I was just having a ton of fat. Yeah. And even during the day, I would be like a little bit of carbs and most, mostly fat. Uh, the one thing I noticed was like instantly my stomach was better. Like, like almost instantaneously, dude, dude. Like I went from like not really able, like being able to like handle bread to like being able to eat bread. Like, and it's not like I'm snuffing bread like you know like a slice or two is yeah. fine it's not gonna it's, but like my stomach wouldn't get all fucked up and then i was like oh my gosh then i went back and recalled all of what happened to me and like i was like oh my like no shit he was onto something and it ever since then i've pretty much just kept refining and refining and refining the protocol and like now it's like my stuff i never have stomach issues man ever unless i'm doing something with food that i know i shouldn't be fucking doing anyway <laughs> So, but that was crazy to notice that difference. Uh, I can tell you uh, how, like, my shock of when I first heard all of this, like, I had a really hard time accepting it because Mm. I did, I did the seminar with Julian for a very simple reason. It was the highest rewarded CEUs towards maintaining my level three in CrossFit. Mm. So by doing this seminar, I practically made sure that for next three years, I have enough credits for maintaining my, <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. and they were in Dubai. So I was like, okay, whatever I will go there. And it's not like I wasn't taking it seriously or anything. I did the preparation, right. And everything. But then when yeah. he was talking about all this shit, I was I was sitting there and first two days I was I didn't even know if I believe him. You know, I was like, what? Like this is so opposite of anything we've been ever told and taught and you know. And just yeah. to explain, I was already on keto that time. Or after my keto period, mm. and I was still I wouldn't probably be in ketosis, but I was in like a fairly low carb regime. But yeah. I was like, what? And never protein and <clears throat> carbs together and carbs only before training? But what if I have them after training in that like 10 to 15 minute window, you know, when uh, right. when yeah. everything is open, you know? And all <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, I, yeah. I had so hard time accepting all of that. But then, yeah. you know, I kept on open mind. I was like, well, if, you don't, if I don't try it, I will never know. Right. So I started to start to try uh, try it within a couple of days I sign up for the mentoring call a uh, uh, mentoring program and I jumped on the first calls and that's when that's when it was the highlight when the nutrition was on the table you know because mm, I, I yeah. came in in that time so it was it was all that yeah like look uh, regarding the protein intake it's this is something where I changed oh. A little bit. Sorry, say that again. Yeah, uh, regarding the protein About intake. The protein? Uh, regarding yeah. the protein intake, I changed a bit in the fact that I don't only do it at night anymore. 
Mm -hmm. But in certain forms and amounts, I don't mind having some protein through the day as well if I will have three to four hours of not training. Yeah? I don't mm. I don't see and I don't consider my work or whatever we call it stressful enough to for that to being a significant factor you know right for, for but, a stress but if you if, the, if it was for someone would you recommend not yeah like if if you're going to and also it depends what right like if you have some fish mm. it's way easier digestible than yes. a steak yeah for sure yeah if yeah. you have two eggs with uh, avocado and vegetable salad like that that's not going to kick you yeah. so much into parasympathetic as the steak yeah. would you know so it really yeah. also depends what and when and how and very important at what state you are consuming it at mm -hmm. like what is your mental state when you're, then you're not you're not doing anything with it yeah so imagine right. two scenarios yeah you come home you got super stressful day you got flat tire, you're all wet, you come in, you find out that your roof is leaking, you're angry as fuck, and <laughs> you know, like, just everything yeah. is wrong, or like, Sideways, not objectively, yeah. but like, well, nobody wants a leak in a roof, right? So, everything is going bad, and you just like, before you're going to fix the roof, you just quickly throw in the steak, and you go to fix it. Or imagine you had a beautiful day at work, you have a date with your girlfriend, you come home, mm -hmm. you're going to cook together, you prepare the meal together, you joke, you're listening to some Christmas carols, whatever, and you know, <laughs> yeah. like super chilled. Everything's uh, good. Everything's Life's good. good. Even there are some stresses, but it doesn't matter at that moment, you know, like mm -hmm. you just sit down and you eat that steak. Who in a healthy mind would think that this steak will be digested the same way. There is no yeah. way it will be digested in the same way and the body will process it in the same way. We are not an oven that will eat, yeah. like, burn it anyway. We call, we talk, we're talking about yeah. burning calories. Maybe that's why people have a, such an understanding that like whatever you do and, you know, that's not, that's yeah. not how it works. And the... And now the question is like, well, what then, what to do then if you are so stressed and you still want to or need to have some protein? Well, you can do breathing exercises. You can yeah. go for a walk. There is many, there is many options, but this is just showing how all these areas, what we are always talking about, training, sleep, nutrition, hydration, uh, cold exposure, yeah? Mm -hmm. Breathing, how all these are so connected that you can't think of one without the other. Because if you're talking about bad sleep, mm -hmm. it influences your digestion, but also bad digestion influences your sleep. Yeah, And that influences your percent. training. And yeah. you can also regulate it through the breathing and you yeah. can use the breathing to regulate the other stuff. Like, it's, it's so intertwined that basically, as, as we started, right, like, uh, this was supposed to be all about nutrition, but if you notice, we're mostly talking about mm -hmm. behavior, because that's what it yeah. is. That's, that's it's, what it's all uh, circles are, around. Yeah, these are some of the conversations I've had with people, because, like, I'll eat lunch, right, at the, at the gym, and, like, you know, I'll have, like, a, like, I'll have, like, a quesadilla, so, like, a just a little bit of bread and like a lot like a ton of cheese and then I'll have like a huge Greek salad with like olive oil and 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 like feta cheese and all of like you know yep and people are like well where's the protein and I'm like well I'm like coaching all day so for me you know like I'm engaging and like I I can I'm moving around a lot like there's just I'm demoing stuff so for me I'm moving quite a bit and I'm like no, I just, I, there's no, and dude, the amount of looks that you get, like no but protein. Look, but to be fair, to be very fair, if you have cheese, it's not like you're not getting any protein. 
No. Yeah? I, exactly. Which, which that's the thing. already like, contributes right. to your need anyway. Yeah. Exactly. So, and that's the thing is like people aren't even looking at the cheese part because all they think is protein is meat or a protein powder. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, but there's or also a, like... Or you, a protein bar that is more carbs than protein. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so like, the, but the, like, you know, the amount of fat to carb ratio, that's kind of what you're looking at is like, or the fat to protein or the carb to protein. Yeah. Like that's, you know, that's kind of what matters. And even then I would argue like, just don't even mix the pro- the two carbs and proteins. Yeah, but, but, but when like, you say, when you say this, we should make clear that if you say what matters is carb to protein ratio, it doesn't mean that if you have 400 grams steak, that if you eat a kilo of potatoes with it, that you ate a carb meal. <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah. That's not how it no, works. Ex- no, exactly. Like and just that's some the thing common is like, sense. Yeah. yeah. We have, that's, this is the problem. This is the problem that we always run into is the fact that we have to reiterate this. Like we, we, there's so much depth to go into because it's necessary because there's so many corners that people will cut. And it's just like, it's, it's, Uh, you know, it's funny. Do you remember the open when they first introduced the The box box step overs? Box step, step ups, ups yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So everybody was thinking about what if I will step <laughs> on the corner, yeah, yeah, and then just yeah, yeah, to pivot, yeah. So this is, and I was telling this to people, and because I was involved in a big gym that time, yeah. I uh, created this meme and sent it to everybody into the group that if you do it the right way, you don't have to ask. If you already have to ask, it's not the right way. You know, like people are asking, yeah. And yeah. Yeah. what if I do it? That's already trying to cut a corner automatically. Yeah. Because that means that you Instantly. understand what's going on, but you're just trying to find some yeah. sneaky way around it. And yeah. you can, sure, but it's your health. It's your, you know, it's like, yeah. like come, on, come on, if you want, it's, like have candies for breakfast. Yeah. It's up to you. If it's, yeah. yeah, exactly. You can, you're an adult. And it's like, if it's not, okay, like, it's just okay is the answer. If you want to understand more, fair enough. Like, why? Then sure. Yeah. But like, what if? I agree. Yeah. It's like, stop circumventing and trying to bend this to the yeah, way yeah, yeah. you want to make course, it. Of course, if somebody's just an asking question and what if yeah. uh, this and this, like, of course. For sure. But you, you, yeah. can, you can sense it if somebody is just curious yes. and they want to understand yes. or they're already thinking like, oh, fuck, he, he <laughs> yeah. just described me, but I, I can, uh, you know, wiggle my way around this. Exactly. Um, so, I, dude, so when you went on that other podcast, talk to that nutrition uh, that other that other guy about nutrition. I wanted I, the one thing that stood out to me, and I want you to kind of I mean, like explain this a little bit more. Okay, is like you said that you were you were training really hard, and you literally would have like a half a liter of heavy cream. Oh yeah, there was the there was the. <laughs> Can you explain that? Because yeah, for all you people out there that are listening, like I eat a ton of fat too. Like heavy cream, love it now. But like one tablespoon of heavy cream is 50 calories. Half oh, yeah. a cup so, is 400. A cup is 800. So, so there were times <laughs> when I had 3,600 calories just from heavy cream a day. Jesus Christ, bro. How so did you do a, that? So that's a one, one, <laughs> one liter of heavy cream. Yeah. Oh my fuck, dude. Yeah. So okay, so explain that. Why, how, just, why did you, what justified it? What justified? Well, first of all, I'm something what in a bodybuilding terminology is called hard gainer. Mm. Which means that for me to gain weight is way harder than to lose weight. Me and you both, brother. Yeah. So... Uh, just for an example, I went home for Christmas now, like, I mean, out of my normal routine, out of my normal food, and I wasn't eating, like, bad stuff, and I wasn't eating little. So these were not the cases, yeah? I was eating good, high quality, and the the stuff that I normally eat, yeah? Mm-hmm. <coughs> but because I was training differently, and the overall regime was off, I lost four kilos, four to five kilos in three weeks. And Holy I didn't shit. want to. 
Yeah, there was a bit. <laughs> there was a bit I wanted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people come like more fat after holiday, and I came uh, ripped after holiday. Yeah. You know. <laughs> oh, you poor soul, dude. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah, exactly. Anyway, but you know, uh, I still don't get a, a convention that if you call somebody fat, that's fat shaming. But if somebody calls you skinny, even you don't like it, that's all right. You know, I yeah. I, do, I don't like it. I had it a whole life, so yeah, yeah, know? yeah, and yeah. It's the same thing. Like, that's uh, funny, like yeah. if, if somebody's like, "Oh, you're so skinny. Oh, I can see your ribs." It's like, hey, I'm not coming to you. I was like, "Oh, you're so fat. Your you know, yeah. your belly it goes sticking both ways out." Here. Yeah, exactly. If we're gonna do it. Like, if we're gonna do it one way, we're doing it both ways. Yeah, if you do it to me i do it to you just be aware yeah, exactly yeah. Yeah. like if you're 100%. going to if you're going to comment on my appearance whew, it's coming yeah. you know yeah yeah anyway <laughs> yeah anyway uh so that time there was the time when we introduced uh on mentoring we were doing the neoprene training to go very very briefly through sorry say that, that again the mic keeps cutting out randomly oh oh uh, that so we were the, doing the neoprene, the neoprene. Ne neoprene training, the wetsuit training, which yeah. basically means that... Which, by the way, I, I've got mine. <laughs> okay, that's very good. You'll, yeah. you'll need it. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so basically, uh, the whole idea was, and it works, if you put yourself into one size smaller neoprene, and you train in yes. it in a very specific way, mostly strength training, mostly going for the most yeah. of the muscle mind connection, heart contraction, like you know, deadlift squats, or even bodybuilding style, but like focused mind, uh, mind to yeah. muscle, uh, heart contraction work. It helps you to build awareness because you feel the muscles way more thanks to the friction and heat more friction than heat, yeah. but heat as well, that the neoprene is providing you. And you also have way stronger, and that's the key, way stronger neural output. Because it's so hard for the system to do it in that kind of, you know, like you, you can almost put yourself into a panic mode, panic attack, if you push it too far, because you just like feel yeah. like you can't breathe, everything is closing up to you and so on. Mm -hmm. So you need to do it yeah. with a proper breathing so you control your state. You need to do it with a proper sets and reps, never longer than 40 minutes. There is a whole kind of a science around it. Anyway, I did this a lot, this kind of training. How often is a lot? Well, I was doing it four times a week. <laughs> oh, my Jesus, dude. For 40 minutes. Oh, man. Which means... <laughs> which means that I needed to recover my nervous system as well. That's why I was having so much fat. Yeah. And also, it was very nice. It was tasting very nice. And it was uh, cold because I had it from the fridge, obviously, yeah, heavy cream. So I literally, I had a yeah. one yeah. liter of heavy cream and I was just sipping, sipping, sipping and suddenly heavy cream was gone. I was like, okay, that's some tolerance already. You know, like I, I didn't do it from day to day. I build it progressively. But there were... Yeah, yeah, don't do that, yeah. people. Because <laughs> I've done yeah. it that way. It's and not it, really it recommended. Sucks. It's not really recommended yeah. at all. Yeah. Uh, if, you, yeah. if you don't have some e ease into guidance. It. Yeah. And, and yeah. first of all, like I did this with some clients as well and I just needed to know so I was guinea pigging on myself you know yeah like just mm -hmm. trying stuff but there were times when and uh, I still coach those uh, those people now and they would re definitely remember it like I had classes at night like PTs and they would come and we would talk and they're like oh my god what happened to you you're so slow like I wasn't reacting I was like <laughs> zoned out i had no idea what's going on i was so slow like i was literally like my nervous system was so crashed mm -hmm. that i i couldn't make myself to do much like i can tell you my sleep was great because i was just switched off completely the heavy cream helped it a lot and but the usually i had the training around lunchtime or before lunchtime so the heavy cream was like right after that mm -hmm. then i napped a little bit and then i was coaching coaching at night again so mm. that's why I was having a lot of heavy cream. Uh, by the way, I still have quite some heavy cream now as well. I my yeah. night nighttime protein shake is 
two scoops of unflavored casein, like the purest form you can get. Yeah. Thanks to, again, thanks to Timia, because she's uh, really, really dialed in into getting us the best possible the best. food from wherever it is, you know. That's awesome. Oh, so she she got she got me this one. So it's unflavored casein, no additives, no sweeteners, nothing. I yeah. have it with two hundred milliliters of heavy cream, maybe another four five hundred milliliters of milk. Yeah. But double fat milk, yeah. So not yeah. full fat, double fat milk. Yeah. Because I can take the fat, and I have like a half two scoops of that protein and like a quarter to half a scoop of raw cacao. So I have that as my... Sorry, quarter, quarter to half a scoop of what? Uh, cacao. Cocoa. Okay, yeah. yeah. Like a raw, like yeah. a raw, raw grinded, like... A, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. purest form of that. So I will, I will have that. And that's my, like, a second dinner. Yeah, that's pretty much exactly what i do okay like, i need i would like to get some better protein but i do the heavy cream and the milk yeah, yeah. casein too casein's yeah, yeah. way better i find than whey for myself for for night for sure absolutely yeah for night as well yeah also some people yeah. who have a intolerance for yes. lactose they can take casein even though they can't take whey but yeah. th- then obviously they don't have it with the milk i hope <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> if no they're doubt. lactose intolerant oh yeah, so that's that's why, that's why. So that it, it wasn't just like okay, I'm going crazy, but no. like just just to be clear, I was getting close to four and a half, five thousand calories every day. If we if we go oh. pure math, it was close to five thousand calories every day because I was eating other stuff as well, right? Like I had the protein, I had everything, but that yeah. heavy cream, just the just the liter of heavy cream was 3,600. I remember that specifically because it's 360 per 400 milliliters. <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, dude, that's unreal. I've not done that yet. Like that's... No, I, yeah, I, I don't that's... think you should. You know what I mean? Like, no. <laughs> like it works in certain aspects. I got stronger. Yeah. I, I gained weight. Uh, definitely yeah. not pure muscles, but I still yeah. had six pack. So, you know, yeah, it wasn't like yeah. uh, too, too much fat anyway. I think, so, uh, yep. Go what on. would you do for carbs then before training? Or during, uh, what would you do? Like, I, and that, that's something I do now as well. I either have uh juice yeah uh, just because i like it and uh, but with a pulp yeah yeah so like a you know juiced juiced uh yeah. fruit whatever it is mm-hmm. uh, i can get some good ones that are like already made again organic whatever with a pulp and everything so i yeah. i change a mandarin pineapple mm-hmm. apple i have i have all the options yeah uh, and i will have pff, Three, four, five hundred milliliters of that, just to like kick in the gear, or handful of raisins, or a yeah. couple of dates, you know, just yeah. just the simplest form of yeah. carbs. I used to do bananas a lot. I don't yeah. buy bananas in Dubai, not for a specific reason. I just don't. Uh, so yeah. I don't do I don't do bananas here. But <laughs> whenever I'm home, funny enough, right? This is way closer to Africa. Yeah. Or wherever they get yeah. the bananas from, but uh, in Slovakia <laughs> yeah. I eat way more bananas than in Dubai. <laughs> That's anyway. so funny. Yeah, but uh, anyway, so some fast carbs, and sometimes yeah. I have some uh, with me, and I will have them after the training as well. But yeah. that's more like just to like fill in if, for example, in jiu-jitsu we got some like very intense sparrings. I have them there. If I feel like, okay, this needs some refueling, I will have them. But yeah. in that window, 10 to 15 minutes after. Sometimes it's within two minutes after the training, you know, like immediately yeah. after. First thing. Yeah, if you're going to go do something again right away. Yeah, yeah interesting. Um, so regarding that much cream, people would just be like, well, that's insane. That's not good. What Look, would you uh, say uh, <laughs> to those uh, people? To those people, I would say that it might not be good. It was something I was trying. It was something I did for a specific reason, and it worked for me. And I did the blood work, and I had yeah. the cleanest and best blood they've ever seen. So, pff, no cholesterol, no problem. Like, 
Like I've never had yeah. anything out of line uh, in this regard. Uh, my hormones are good. I was sleeping. I was sleeping good. I don't do blood work like super regularly. Like some people do every quarter or every half year. I yeah. don't do that. But when I do some major changes, then I wait three, four months and then I do the blood work just to see. And I mm -hmm. and this didn't impact it in a, any particular way. But that doesn't mean that everybody should do it. But yeah, I can tell you no. one thing. If you're a guy who was called skinny all life and you yeah. can't gain, then train fucking hard and do this and you will gain. <laughs> like, I, see, there's I see something. I see heavy cream becoming bigger in my future here. <laughs> <laughs> I am literally that guy, dude. Yeah, like, like it's... Uh, yeah. And look, like you can also overdo it in a meaning. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, I have some disgusting stories. Dude, yeah. Where it was a little bit too heavy for my stomach and I projectile vomited it in split of a second, full liter, straight on out. Yeah. <laughs> that happened once or twice because it just I just drank it too fast, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it was I've just done, yeah. just body didn't accept it. And yeah. for for uh and there was also a period of a time and this is again this is the self regulation where I came to a point that I, I didn't have not like I didn't have craving for it, but when I tasted it I was like, Oh, this is not good. You know, I just oh, I, I just yeah. like I just got sick of it, which is not normal for me. I can eat the same food over yeah. and over and over and I don't care because I don't yeah. eat food necessarily for the taste and uh, you know the gastronomical experience of it yeah, so yeah. <laughs> so if something doesn't taste good to me even i was used to it it means something so i dialed it down a little bit that time and now as i'm saying i have two 300 milliliters a day max yeah that's yeah, which is a still a lot for many yeah. people oh, for but i can people, tell you yeah. if you want to do it but you just can't take the taste of it you have a couple of options. You can either make it into a smoothie with some, uh, you know, you do the heavy cream, you do milk. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. really doesn't matter if it's low fat milk at that moment. <laughs> Just yeah. like, no. you can <laughs> yeah, use normal yeah, yeah. milk. Yeah, uh, yeah. And you do some uh, frozen fruit. You make it into uh, like a smoothie. Yeah. Or, really, yeah. which is, which was my favorite. And it was, it was becoming, we literally had uh, this, uh, a running joke with a couple of friends like that's the most dangerous drink ever and that was when you make a heavy cream into coffee but you make so much heavy cream into hot coffee that it will become cold so that's your ratio you know <laughs> so like you, have, you know you've got enough yeah so you have like a uh you know double espresso and you put yeah. 300 milliliters of a heavy cream into it like it's so it's so good it tastes so good it's dangerous because you could drink a lot of it, like even if you don't want to, you know. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's usually what I do. Is like I can get a sixteen ounce, like there latte, decaf latte, and like mate the the first like I know the guy that because I go there quite often. But the barista that like makes the coffee, he, he like he like looks at me and he's like, "Fuck it, you want this all made with heavy cream?" I'm yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, go for it. And he's just like, he, now it's normal. But man, when I first started doing it, he couldn't fuck. He couldn't believe it. Couldn't oh believe yeah, his eyes. Like, he's like, what the fuck, dude? It's look, like that's it's sixteen hundred calories of fucking cream, dude. Yeah, exactly. And sixteen ounce drinks, dude. It's it's funny, man. Yeah, but but, but it works. Yeah, it works. It works. Uh, it, and it will it will keep it you works, full. It, it will keep you full. Like you don't need to. Yes. Uh, you know, so, you don't crave food uh, anytime soon after that because of the, all that fat. No. Oh, no. That, and that's, that's what I noticed too is like, so when most people are like, oh, well, because that's the thing too, right? Is like a lot of people are like, well, you need to eat a ton of protein because it makes you full. And I was like, wait a second. Protein is a lot harder to digest. So by nature, it's going to take more time. Like that's digesting a carb is going to be faster and, and more and yeah. easier on, on the body than a protein. That is different. Like slower digestion and being full, like satisfied are two different things. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because like, I'll tell you right now, if you just have meat and vegetables, no matter how much you eat, you don't really feel that full. 
Like it's hard. Like the fat is what sa- is what satiates you. The fat is what gives you that feeling of fullness. But at the same at the same time, there is a uh, leptin. I think I hope I'm saying yep. it right. The hormone that yep. is the satiety hormone, but it doesn't yeah. got. Re- it's not released by consumption of carbs. Sorry, it, it doesn't. It doesn't work. It doesn't. It doesn't get released. It doesn't work what? It doesn't get released by consumption of carbs. It only gets mm, released when you eat protein or fat. That's why. Yeah. If you have a chicken, you, you know, like, can you imagine yeah. that you have bottomless chicken breast yeah. and you just can't <laughs> stop eating? Like, no. no. At some point, no. it will become disgusting. Yeah. Exactly. And yeah. imagine this with cakes or you know deep fried Mm. shit with uh deep fried shit with the like bread crumbs and all that like you can go forever on that yeah because the carbs don't have this stoppage there's no stoppage for that and it wasn't yeah Uh, interesting so that's the that's the that's the challenge of uh of overeating when you only eat carbs, because you can very easily overeat them, especially like you know the the potato chips. It's deep fried potatoes. Yeah. It's, you can go forever. There's there's no yeah, and <laughs> plus plus it's literally engineered so it tastes good. Like they have labs that they're engineering the ratio of saltiness, sweetness, and texture, so it's addictive. They yeah. they actually have formulas for that. So, I mean, it's a it's a tough tough battle. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. It is. So maybe to wrap it up. Yep. Um. What? Say someone was. Hmm, if someone was gonna try this protocol, where what would be like the most simplest thing to do? What's the best way to start? Get in touch with you or me. <laughs> there you go, dude. Really? Like <laughs> Yeah. And I'm I not saying you can't and, go and I'm not saying this is a you know like a, a sales strategy. I'm if, yeah. if you no, want just no, some advice no. and guidance, I'm happy to do it for free. Like no yeah. no problem. Yeah. yeah. Uh wouldn't be first. Don't time. go at it alone. Yeah. But it's yeah. Uh like we, we can talk about it a lot, but there is so much things to consider. There and is. until you experience it. You will not really know. And for that, you need a little bit of guidance, especially if you... Uh, it's not even if you haven't like done any diet or anything before, but just uh, generally, uh, you need to also have a certain kind of... Like the kind of mindset that uh, I might fuck it up because that's how I was starting. You yeah, know, if you that's don't, exactly how I started. Yeah, too. so if you don't have a mindset that like I... If you really care about doing it right, you need to get some guidance because yeah. more like more likely than not something will be off and you will have a lot of questions and there is yes. there's nowhere to find the answers for that if you don't already have the experience you have to have someone beside you because i'm kind of working with a fellow that's like basically i'm mentoring and you have to have someone that is going to explain what's happening to you yeah because there is there is a lot of things that come up that necessarily don't really like you don't really have with food like regular diets necessarily yeah and in you and know, that, it's all about building awareness so you when whenever exactly. something happens you need to be able to interpret it right and actually find yeah. out what is going on yeah i have a <laughs> so i have a funny so this guy trevor great fellow i'll have him on the podcast soon enough but he's like basically kinesiology he went through all this he's and he's like, I kind of did a seminar about the nervous system and whatnot and some training. And he was like taken aback. He's like, I, I can't believe like he, he's like, I can't believe what I'm learning because this is not necessarily what I was taught, you know, in school. Yeah. And like, same with me, I was the same way. And so he, we've been and hanging out and I was like, okay, like you want to learn like no fix November, like right away. This is, this is just what we got to do. And he just dove in head first and. You know, like, for, you know, he's pretty good. He's, he's learned, but he's like, man, I'm feeling a ton of stuff that I never felt before. Mm. And he'll explain his process at some point. But one thing he did is he's like, 
he's like, man, I, I kind of fucked up. And I was like, oh, what happened? He's like, well, I just went, I was out skiing and he basically has like a full chicken breast, has some carbs. And then like, he's like going up to finish a couple more runs. And he's like, he came down from half the run and he's like, oh no. He like instantly felt the <laughs> somatic air happening because mm-hmm. You know, and especially skiing too, right? Like you got to be so aware, like you have to pay attention, like it's full sympathetic, man. Like you're there, you know, like you got to be there. And it was, I think it was at nighttime too. So it was even, it was even harder. And he was just like, man, like in that moment, I knew what had happened. Like he, he's like, I had like one, I did one more run. And then he's like, I went home and I was tired. I was bagged. Mm. I was like, well, yeah, <laughs> you're trying to digest this heavy ass meat, but then go for a run. Like exactly what you said earlier, right? Like since when do you... Do you ever like crave to go train after you've eaten like a like massive yeah. steak meal? Yeah, a heavy but protein. like it takes those moments to learn too, right? Like I told him, but, I was like, this but, this is, but now this you is... know. Now you know. Like if exactly. you did this perfectly, it would make no sense. <laughs> exactly. That's why. That's why my answer to your question was like, if you want to do it right yeah. at first, you need guidance yeah. because you will yeah. probably have some hiccups on the way anyway. But if yeah. you will go only on your own then you will learn everything on your own mistakes. That's yeah. literally what happened to me. Cause yeah. all I had was the strong fit podcast. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was it. And I fucked, but it took me, the only thing is like, we'll expedite the process. It takes, of course. it took me like two years, and now you have, but I fucking learned so exactly. much. Shit. And now you have so much experience that you can really guide somebody because if, exactly. you, if you've never done the mistakes, you don't know how to deal with them. Right. So exactly. that, that's why that's what was really good uh, on uh, mentoring with Julian. That's why also yeah. that's kind of the style and way I'm approaching my coaching and leading people yeah. as well. It's like, it's more, trying than actually or uh, how how to explain this like it's more like getting them the experience regardless of a result at first and then we talk about it and what we learn and get some feedback and get an explanation of why it happened the way it happened then just right. holding the hand all the way like no like you need to go and experience it your own way and you might you might learn some stuff that I don't even know, and I will learn from that as well, you know? Yeah, that's pretty much what's happening. And it's it, crazy, too. And it's different from setting up people for failure. It's setting up people for learning. Yeah, yeah that's exactly. very different. Yeah, not success either. Just yeah. just learning, and then that will gradually bring you to it's success basically like, at some point. It's basically like, okay, you, you go for a march or a hike or a ruck, yeah? Like we were talking yeah. last time. Like you go for a ruck, and I'll tell you, okay, meeting point is here. I don't care what path you take. That's up to you. Yeah. But I want you to get to this point. And yeah. if we meet yeah. there, then we can talk about how the journey went. If, if yeah. it was a good idea to go all uphill or why yeah. you choose the way you choose or whatever, right? Yeah. So, yeah. So this is... Yeah. And be- because that's how... Like, that's how we learn as kids only afterwards when we already know how mm-hmm. to walk and talk, because that's yeah. all through failure. Walking and talking is only learned through failing. Yeah. And yeah. then we go to school where there is only one right answer. And even yeah. the way you get there is needed, usually needs to be the same, which is yeah. exact opposite of how actually stuff is happening. So yeah, that's why it curbs your ability to yeah, learn. That's why self-taught people many times ex- like, exceed expectations mm. and they are way ahead of anybody with a formal education yeah yeah because yeah the, their ability to be creative is a huge part yeah. of intelligence because you you th- you can think not only you know right repeat yeah interesting okay. all right dude well any closing notes closing you note say? is anything you'd- uh i would say that as i said at the beginning like it evolved a lot with me as well like I, I was yeah. vegetarian very long time ago. I tried it. Holy, really? Oh, yeah. I did not know but that. I was, I was oh, like, fi- I was like fifteen, sixteen. Yeah. But oh yeah. Not for a long time either, because <laughs> yeah. I started to have this stomach pain, because yeah. I was veg- I was vegetarian for half a year, a year maybe, and and then I was like, but I was eating a lot of cheese and eggs and stuff. Yeah, but. Mm. 
but probably not enough, I started to have this stomach pain. And I was like, what is, like, why is this happening? What is, what is mm. going on? And then I found out it was hunger because I started to train <laughs> and, I, and I just started to be yeah. hungry, you know? Like, yeah, 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 yeah. So problem solved, I started to eat meat. Uh, That's so and funny. So th there, was, there is a lot of stuff and if you want to try something, just, you know, go for it, but not head first. Yeah. Yeah. Use head first. Toes first. Don't go yeah. head first, but use head yeah. first. Yeah. And Toes first. <laughs> yeah. The other thing yeah. is, I was talking like, you know, are, car are carbs bad? No. They have no. their purpose. Of course. Yeah. Protein has its purpose. Fats has its purpose. Yeah. Uh, and if you can afford, if you, like your metabolism can afford to process them without you having... Not only, you know, excessive gain uh, in weight and stuff, but also excessive reaction of your nervous system because you are dialed in and you already can listen to your body and the cues that it's giving you that uh, one or two hours after eating certain meal, if you start to have weird thoughts or just random thoughts or my friend, uh, one, one of my very good friends, he... From time to time, he will just have an idea of uh, having a KFC or a McDonald's. And he noticed on himself, any time he has it, for next two or three days, he will start to have like crazy nihilistic thoughts. And it's like, he doesn't care about stuff anymore. And he's just like, mm. you know. And he observed on himself that that happens for two, three days after having a McDonald's. Imagine some people eat it every day. They don't even notice the change because that's their standard. That's crazy, yeah. bro. And it's all, it's all gut bacteria, gut flora, processed food, regardless of whatever you think about calories in, calories out, processed food is fucked up. There was a guy, a scientist, who paid his own son to go to a, for a kind of like a case study for him. And he took his uh, samples of a gut, yeah? Mm -hmm. He put him on a McDonald's only for two weeks. <laughs> oh the guy God. wanted to quit after three days. He was like, don't, don't make me do it more. It's like, shut up, you're a student. I'm paying you for this. Finish it. Then he took his samples again. He killed like 40% of his bacteria. Oh my and God, even dude. in eight months, it wasn't on the original levels. Like Fuck, this, dude. yeah, the processed food, all the... Yeah, the industry, <laughs> the food industry yeah. that is industrially making the food, like that, that's just fucked up. Like that we should avoid on any cost. If you can manage higher level of carb, carbs without any negative, but also mental and neurological, you know, reaction, yeah. go for it. Everybody's built differently. If you have mm -hmm. such an activity that you can literally burn, like I always, always the guys, uh, from military who went through like, you know, the type of like bots, hell week and all that stuff. Yeah. Like these guys, I can tell you if he's moving all day, he's on yeah. a sleep deficit and he's yeah. just fucked up from the head to toe. And he has such a massive uh, energy out output. It doesn't really matter what he eats. He just needs to eat. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. if everything is, it's more like, I would even say, however weird it sounds, like the more you are in sympathetic, the more, but like active sympathetic, like physical activity, hard work, yeah, yeah? not yeah. chronically uh, depressed and uh, yeah. chronically, <laughs> like chronically yeah. tired from work and yeah, not anxiety yeah. type of yeah. uh, sympathetic, but like full on fight mode sympathetic for a long time, you can afford to go to extremes in food as well. Like way more carbs, yeah. just like heavy, hard, you know, mayonnaise on everything and chips and yeah. whatever just to get the energy in. But the more you are in a calm, civilized, chilled environment, the more you have to adapt the food to that as well. That's funny. Yeah, I instantly I just think of bodybuilders. Like yeah, but know, even the ones like the ones that aren't on drugs, more specifically. Oh yeah, the ones because the ones who are like talking yeah. about 
uh, intake of steroids or you know yeah, exogenous that hormones changes that everything. changes everything. That, that's yeah, are, these are so, such a strong variables that yeah. it just changes everything. You're, yeah, but the ones that aren't that are that you know like dude, 400 grams of protein and you have like maybe an hour and a half workout. I'm like holy shit. Well, that th- is a then we then we go of- then we go into the uh, the point of what we talked about before, like how much do you actually digest out of it in what environment well, are you digesting yeah well that's just, i've just putting yeah. it into the mouth is not doing yeah it all yeah like it needs well, I've to talk- a little bit more uh one of yeah someone that i ta- not that i talked to but that i heard from was like oh yeah i i know this like whatever this this girl and she's like you know it's a bodybuilder shitting five six times a day i was like yeah, that's a fucking problem, dude. Like, <laughs> what are you doing with your food? <laughs> like, nothing. Your food is literally just p- passing through you at this point. Like, you're just, like, you're not absorbing anything. Like, oh, maybe not not nothing, but, like, you you know, yeah, like, yeah. you don't need that much food. Like, that's you don't need that. Like, that's, and that's a lot of, that's a lot of energy, too. Well, there are, some, there are some uh, doctors who are actually saying that we should, uh, we should go, Every, after every major meal but yeah six times a day is a little bit excessive yeah yeah <laughs> yeah that's a lot dude it's like if you only you eat know. non-stop right <laughs> yeah exactly anyway all right dude i think that's perfect man another one down done and dusted awesome well Th- i i hope again. that the answers were interesting and something uh you know not what you expected oh, yeah, because that, that's not the point, right? But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a, a good, lot of good brain stimulus. Yeah. All right, dude. Well, I'll be in touch, obviously. Yep. But uh, yeah, man. Thank you Thanks very much, again, dude. Thank, Thank you. you.